You know, we're just following these steps, and they're up here. Factor denominators only, because we've got to add the numerators, so you don't want to factor the numerators no matter what you get, uh, because then you have to combine like terms. Get common denominators, and that's what we just talked about. And then, um, then we just combine like terms up top. So on this problem, do we have to do anything with the denominator? No. Okay. So then, what does this become then? 7x over y. 7x over y. Can we simplify that at all? When you add fractions, you don't mess with the denominators. Once they're the same, they're just the same. Right? It's like three bananas plus four bananas gives you seven bananas. Right? Is that okay? Yes. All right, so do we need to mess with anything in the denominator? Yes. No, no. no they're exactly the same. So then we do what to the numerators? We've got to combine. Okay, so what would it look like? X, Y, minus X. X minus Y. X minus Y, because they're not like terms, you can't combine them, over X minus Y. Can you simplify that? Yep. All right, that just cancels out. But, you know, X minus Y and X minus Y cancel out, and then you're left with one. Is that okay? Yep. I have a question. Can you use like fractions like that to equal numbers? Like if you sure. do like a Morse code or something. Like you know what I mean? Yeah, I mean yeah. Okay. Um are the denominators the same on this one? No. Okay, so but what do you notice about them? They are similar. Okay, so they're just like switched, so what's that mean? We need to make them the same in order to make this work. Now of course you could Say, well, we can multiply the first fraction by 2 minus y and the second one by y minus 2, and you really wouldn't be incorrect, but you would create a situation that would be very difficult to simplify down. Okay, so if you notice that the signs are just different, what can we do to make them the same? The how? Okay, you can't just flip it. Yeah. All right, so... Technically, you can't multiply here, so you want to factor. But as long as you get the right thing, I don't, it doesn't really matter to me how you think about it. So does it matter which one we do that to? Okay, I'm going to do it to the second one because that's just kind of easier to look at. But no, the answer is no, you, it doesn't matter which one you do it to. So then we would have this. And so what does that mean for this whole... The expression like where where does where does this thing go like wh how, how does this change well they're kind of the same right they're, they're not really the same yet okay so the thing with a, a fraction that has a negative sign in it is that it doesn't really matter where it is. It can be down here, or we could m make it up here. Like she said, this could be negative y minus 3, or you could even change this to a subtraction. And then you don't have to worry about multiplying this one by negative 1. Now, of course, you could do that. We could multiply by negative 1 over here and then negatives up here, and you'd still be pretty good. You'd just have one little thing you'd have to do at the end. So, you know, probably what um, she just said would be the easiest. So... And we have this. And you would have to distribute it to both of them. And now it would just be y minus 2. And so then, uh, right, what would this become? Uh, it becomes 3y minus 2y. 2y. Minus 4 over y minus 2. So now can we simplify this? Uh, don't do anything crazy. Do, we, are you, do you have any factors? Did you did you just try to cancel factors? Because you still those still you know those rules still apply. So you can only cancel factors. So don't just get nuts and you know start dividing things out. Can we do anything to the numerator to get some factors up there? Two. 
Okay, so we could take out a 2. So I kind of ran out of space, but I'll go up. All right, we'll go up here. So if we take out a 2, what's left over? Y minus 2. And then that's over y minus 2 now. So now you can cancel the y minus 2. So this simplifies down to 2. Okay, so at the very beginning of this problem, I said, you know, well, you could, you could have come up here and multiplied this fraction by this denominator and this fraction by this denominator. But then, you know, then you'd have to FOIL up here, FOIL up here, combine like terms, and then you'd have a lot more work to get down to 2 because 2 is the answer. That's, you want to make these simplified as far as possible. Is that okay? Okay, so we have to use all of the steps on this one. We don't have any common denominators, so you do want to, and they're not related like they were on that last one, where the signs were just opposite. So we do want to factor everything first. So what uh, can we factor, and just denominators here, what can we factor in the first one? Okay, so then this is 3x plus 2. And we take a 3 out, and we have uh, careful minus 2, right, because we're, we're dividing. Okay, and so then the numerator here stays the same for right now, x plus 2. And then what does x squared minus 4 factor into? Right, those are difference of squares. Is that okay with everybody? All right, so then now this is the process that we did at the beginning. You know, what is our common denominator? We're going to start with that. Uh, well, we need an x minus 10. Let me get that going. So you need a 3. You need a 3. What else do you need? x plus 2. You need x plus 2. x minus 3. Is that okay with everyone? Mm -hmm. I'm going to run out of room here. Is that okay with everyone? Okay, so then the first one, we already had 3x plus 2. And the second one, we already had x plus 2. So then what, uh, what was missing from the, we're looking at the first fraction here, what was missing from the first denominator that was now in the second, or, you know, in the first one and this step? Well, we are, didn't we already have an x minus 2 in the first fraction there? Right, so right, we already had a 3 and an x minus 2. Okay, I have no idea what I was saying, but um, what was I saying? Oh, yeah, so we were, we were just looking at this, right? So, right, there's an x minus 2 already here. There's a 3 already here. So then really it was the x plus 2 that we need. Okay, so then x plus 2. And so the same question over here. What do we have in our common denominator that was missing up here? A 3, okay, so then we have to add that. <coughs> and I'm going to put it out front here. All right, so now we have common denominators, but as is, we can't add these together. So now we have to FOIL. So, do this in green. So, let's FOIL this first numerator. What is that going to end up being? 3x plus 2x. Hold on one second. Plus what? We did 3x yeah. plus 4. Okay. What was, it, what was the question? I said, why did you move the 3 and the x plus 2 up with the whole one? What are you talking about? When you put the x plus 2 in the numerator and the 3 in the numerator of both. In the denominator? Yeah. No, in the numerator. So, right, this one, this one already had 3x three, three plus 2, right? Yeah. And then this was the original denominator. But we're saying that the common denominator has to be all of this. And so this one was missing the x plus 2. So that's why we had to multiply by x plus 2 down here. But then you don't get a choice. 
you have to multiply by x plus 2 up here. Uh, okay. okay, so the only thing that was missing from this one was the 3. Okay, and so that's why we're only m multiplying by 3 in that. Okay, and that's, that's basically the whole thing. you got to make sure you get that. So then what does... 3x plus 6 okay so now we're basically just combining like terms so now I got technology all right um, so again we got we got to combine like terms before we do anything else and so you can do this in a couple steps uh, just be careful when you have a subtraction one that has to you have to subtract everything on the on the uh, second one. So what about the x squared term? Is that going to be, what's that going to end up being? Right, because we're going to combine this into 1. So now we have, right, 3x plus 2, x minus 2. Would it be, though? Right, because we have a, we have a positive x, 3x squared minus nothing. Because there's no like term over here. So how about just 3x squared right now? And now we have, right, 8x minus 3x, so 5x. And then minus 2, because it's 4 minus 6. Is that okay with everyone? So how do we check to see if this gets simplified at all? What do we have to do? Factor, okay, so then we're looking at the numerator here. 3 times negative 2 is negative 6. Factors of negative 6. So the question is, are there factors of negative 6 that add to give you 5? Yes. Po uh, other way around, though, right? Positive 6 and negative 1. Okay, so, right? Yeah, because of positive 5. So then 3x squared plus 6x minus x minus 2. What do we take out of the first two? So then, what's left over? X plus two. Okay, what comes out of the second two, or the last two there? Negative one, X plus two. Okay, so then that, the numerator factors into X plus two, three X minus one. Okay, watch this name. talking about. So x plus 2, 3x minus 1. All right, so then is there anything that we can, all right, the x plus 2s can go away. And so then the final simplified answer is 3x minus 1 over 3x plus 2. Is that okay? So, I mean, they might be a little bit long, but, I mean, none of it should be horrible. I mean, you're just factoring and things like that. So I got one more for you. Okay, so, you know, we have to go through all the steps. The common, there is no common denominator, so we have to go about getting it. So then, what is the first thing we need to do here? Okay, so then, A is 1 on these, so they should be super easy to do. 1 times negative 6 is negative 6. Factors of negative 6 that I had to give you negative 1. Negative 3 and positive 2. Okay. Same thing. A is 1, so you should be happy. 1 times 6 is 6. Factors of 6 that I had to give you positive 5. Positive, th positive 3 and positive 2, right? Careful on sixes. So then, what is our common denominator then? Is that okay with everyone?
Okay, so then this one already had an n, and this one already had an n plus 2. So what is missing from the first one that we had to put into the, the newer one? So n plus 3, so then it's going to be n plus 3. And then over here, it's n minus 3. Is that okay with everybody? Yeah, they both had an n plus 2, so we didn't have to worry about that. The first one was missing the n plus 3, so that's why it's over in the first one. The second one was missing the n minus 3, so that's why it's in the second one. Is that okay? Yeah. All right, so now what? Okay, so now you're just going to FOIL or distribute. So this first one is n squared plus 3n. Okay, and then the second one, right, we have to FOIL all that, so what's it become? Okay, now be careful because we're subtracting here. But, you know, you can combine those if you want, or you can just do it, you know, in one step. That's how I'm going to do it, just to save some room here. So, right, it's going to be... Denominator is going to stay the same. So what's the numerator going to be? Like one thing at a time. What about the n squared? They're gone, right? n squared minus n squared is gone. Okay, what about the n's? Three n's are gone. Careful. Okay, so okay, one, th one thing at a time, one thing at a time. So, right, you know, maybe, maybe you want to do, right, maybe you want to say this, these two give you negative n, right, negative 3n plus 2n. So that gives you negative n. So it's 4n, right, 3n minus a negative 1n is 4n. So then we have 4n. Okay, what about plus 6, right, because it's 0 minus a negative 6, so it's plus 6. So is there anything that we can do to simplify? All right, so we should check at least, right? So, you know, it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to happen, but you should say, well, we could take a 2 out and we'd be left with 2n plus 3, but is, is there anything that we can simplify there? Okay, so either one of these is fine, you know, but you do want to check. You don't want to get all the way down and then... Just forget to simplify, and then you know you miss points because of that. Is that okay?